what you just saw was completely rendered in Blender and inspired by the TV show Fallout. Specifically, the shop. Hi everyone, Tom here from Action VFX, and today I'm going to show you how simple it was to create this scene using nothing more than Blender, our free VDB shader, and one of our 3D explosion assets. All you need to do is download our free VDB shader. So let's start off with how you can download it. Simply head on over to actionvfx.com, enter our 3D library, filter to VDBs, and find the free Blender shader. Log in or create a Action VFX account and you'll find it there in your downloads. Once downloaded, extract the files from the .zip and open up the .blend file. Once open, you'll notice that it's looking a little bit empty in here. There's nothing in the layout viewer, but we have this viewer open for the shader editor. We'll link these up with a VDB sequence later, but for now, we can extend the window of our layout. For simplicity later, select them all, hit M on the keyboard, and create a new collection for them to live in and disable visibility of our VDBs. Now's the time that you need to make a decision. Where are you gonna detonate the nuke? Because Fallout was the inspiration for the shot, we are looking at recreating that LA downtown vibe. But if you're looking for something a little bit more Oppenheimer, then you may wanna look at some deserts in like New Mexico or Nevada. The beginning half of this tutorial will still apply. You just won't need to recreate small buildings. If anything, you've got it easier. First up, you're going to need to install the Blender GIS add-on. So, open up Blender and head to Edit, then Preferences. In the Preferences window, hit the Add-ons tab and click Install at the top. Find the GIS add-on file you downloaded. It's usually a zip file. Select it and click on Install add-on. Boom, you're set. Now let's get on to the fun part. Close the Preferences window and up in the left-hand corner, you will see a shiny new GIS tab. Click on it and this is your new playground. In the GIS tab, you will see options like base maps for satellite imagery, shape files for geometry data, and open street maps for detailed geodata. For this example, we're just going to go into web geodata and then base map. What you'll see is a map of the world and you can search this for a good spot using the middle mouse wheel or hit G to bring up the search bar and enter some coordinates or the name of a location. I googled the coordinates for downtown LA to get the environment that I wanted and then just copied and pasted it into the search bar. Dial in the level of height you want. 16 is probably a good starting point. You can use the middle mouse to move around and the wheel to zoom in and out of the map to find your ideal location. If you're happy with that selection, then hit E and you'll extract that area into a plane. All right, now let's talk about getting the elevation data for your selected zone, because it's time to take your landscapes to new heights. In the GIS tab, go to Web Geodata and then Get Elevation. This will raise the terrain to the actual height of that location, which is pretty cool. Next, we can grab the buildings pretty easily by heading back into the GIS tab, then go Base Map and Get OSM. Depending on what you're working on, you may want to do things like get the highway details, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to have the buildings. Be sure to enable Elevate from Object. You can enable Separate if you really like, but this is going to take a lot longer to create. And once happy, hit OK. This is going to take a while, and since you're at this point in the video, why not subscribe to the channel? We have an ever-expanding library of assets at our disposal, and we are looking to make more tutorials to show off how you can use them. So if that's of interest, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help us out and tells us that you want more of this type of content. Now that we've got our main location, this is where we can actually expand our scene a little bit. We're going to head back to the GIS tab, go down to Base Map, and this time we're going to zoom out a little bit to get a broader view, making sure to then also get the height elevation. But this time we're not gonna worry about the buildings. On close inspection, you may notice the texture isn't a high quality as the others. This is because of the image that Google has given us. But it's not going to matter as it's only for the stuff out in the distance. What you need to do for both textures of the GIS maps is raise the roughness in the material node, unless you're making a shiny city. With your city made, move your camera into position. You can either create a new one and move it, or to align the existing camera to the current view, hit Control, Alt, Numpad, Zero. Or go to View, Align, Align Active Camera to View. You may need to adjust the view clipping on the camera to something crazy like 100,000 in order to actually see everything. Next, switch to Render View by hitting Z on the keyboard and see how things are shaping up. 
Now let's move the nuke and smoke into position. As the GIS relocates and recenters your scene based on your location of choice, we need to first set their positions to zero in both X and Y axis. Forget the meteor, you're not gonna use it, so go ahead and either disable it or delete it. Make sure visibility is enabled so you can see what you're working with. If you're using one of our VDB explosions, and I hope you are, then link up what we've provided in the LOD folder, including the explosion and the dust assets. There is also a ring option, but I won't be using it for this tutorial. Add the VDB sequence to the correct VDB shader and set it to the right number of frames and do the same on the timeline. So in this case, the nuke asset I'm using is 300 frames, so I'll use that for optimum results. Repeat these steps in order to make the smoke, this time using what's in the dust folder. You might want to readjust the camera after seeing the scale. Now is a great time to experiment with different lens sizes and adjust the sensor settings to match the camera that you might be using for practical stuff. Keeping things consistent with your actual setup will give you the best results. And Blender already has a great set of sensor presets for individual cameras that you may actually have. In render mode, you can see how detailed this nuke looks without having heavy simulation time. And that it's also emitting a light to the scene. It's kind of a shame they're surrounded by blank blocks, so let's fix that. Disable the explosion visibility in order to save on render time. And now let's add some materials to those buildings. There are a bunch of seamless textures all over the internet, but I'm going to be using one from textures.com that I found here. With that, open a new window for the UV editor and shader editor. Create a new texture and name it glass. In the shader editor, hit shift and A to bring up the menu and search for image texture. Hit open, find your texture and link it to the base color. In the UV editor, open the texture. Switch to a side view by hitting one or three on the numpad. Select the buildings and hit tab to enter the edit mode. Press A to select them all and then U to unwrap and finally going down to selecting project from view. You'll see that the city is mapped out over your texture. Scale this up and adjust the positioning of the glass using S to scale and G to move. For extra detail, create a color, color ramp. For extra detail, create a color, oh my God, color ramp. Link the image texture to the ramp and then connect it to the roughness. You can then dial in the levels to get those reflections popping in your windows. For the rooftop, hit seven on the numpad and that'll take you to the top view. While still in edit mode, enable face selection. Now click and drag to select all of those rooftops. Create a new texture slot by using the plus icon here in the material settings. Add a new material and you'll see underneath the tab, assign. Click it and all of those faces will now have this plain material. Now you could do a similar thing and find a texture of concrete, but for something for quick and easy, add a noise node and another color ramp, connecting them together and into the base color. You can play around with the settings until you get this patchy random concrete asphalt looking detail. To really make the scene pop, Add an HDRI environment for some realistic lighting. Go to the World tab and in the Properties panel, click Color, then Environment, and load up an HDRI file. Tweak the settings of the rotation and the strength to get that perfect look. If your HDRI image has a sun visible in the scene, be sure to align the sunlight in Blender to match it. To make sure that you've got full control over the white balance of your sun as well, you can go into the light settings, click use nodes, and then in the shader editor, add in a black body. Connect this into the color of your emission, and now you have something where you can actually type in the values of white balances. Now that the lighting is coming together, let's create an atmosphere for this landscape. In the 3D viewer, add a cube, scale way up to cover most of your scene, add a new material, and head into the shader editor. Delete the principal shader and replace it by adding a principled volume. Lower the density way down. And depending on the size of your scene, this could be anything from 0.1 to 0.000001. And set the anisotropy to 033 to diffuse the light nicely. Speaking of light, let's also tweak the explosion shader. We've got a color ramp providing the fiery tones of our nuke, but this node is controlling the emission. So if you wanted, you can animate this to be brighter at the start and then fade away over time. By hovering over the value, hitting I on the keyboard, and then going over to a new location, dialing up a new figure, and then hitting I again. 
It's a stylistic choice, so go wild. Now for the finishing touch, all you need to do is go into your composite of choice, choose a glow effect, and dial up the intensity and threshold that then animates down as the scene progresses. The beauty of working with a 3D FX asset is that if this shot isn't really doing it for you, you can just pick it up and move it. Create a sequence from multiple angles, open up GIS again and place it somewhere completely different. And the best part is that you don't have to worry about re-simulating anything. It's incredible how easy you can go from a blank canvas to an incredible blockbuster scene. So if you're looking to create more visual effects while breaking a sweat, then please do consider checking out more from Action VFX.